This is Sony's latest flagship, the Xperia 5, which is still banking on the interesting 21 by 9 aspect ratio, but it comes in a slightly smaller package than the Xperia 1. So we've gone hands on to give you our first impressions. Thanks for watching 95 Google on YouTube. Be sure to thumbs up, hit subscribe, and then enable notifications with the bell icon so that you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. While Sony Mobile continues to struggle to get a foothold in the market in 2019, it appears that they want to go down fighting the corner of taller, thinner phones, and the Xperia 5 does so in a package that is designed to be easier to manage if you do have smaller hands. By no means is this a small phone though, as the 6.1 inch display is large, but with a 21 by 9 aspect ratio, it does mean it is not as wide and therefore easier to grasp than comparatively screen laden handsets. The AMOLED display, despite taking a bump down from 4K to Full HD+, is crystal clear and looks great from just about any angle. The 21 by 9 aspect ratio also works wonders for videos, movies and gaming. I have to say that the design is typically Sony, and by that I mean sleek, smooth and well finished. The lack of notch and tall, thin size feels at odds with the rest of the industry. It still feels kind of refreshing, as it did with the Xperia 1 some 8 months ago. Internally, the Xperia 5 shares much of the internals of the Xperia 1. That means a Snapdragon 855 chipset, 6GB of RAM, 128GB of microSD expandable storage, and the same camera setup at the front and back. The Xperia 5 retains the triple 12 megapixel sensor setup, which consists of three fixed focal lengths, one being a 25mm equivalent, another being an ultrawide, and a 2x telephoto. Where the Xperia 5 differs is in the positioning at the rear. It moves from the middle to an upper right position, which seems to be on vogue for camera positioning for 2019 flagships. The software remains in the Android Pie flavour, and although a slimline build, you will see some pre-installed apps such as the Cinema Pro camera. This allows you to get truly granular with your photos and video, and although a wonderful inclusion, might be beyond the average buyer. Considering the internals and lightweight skin during our limited hands-on time, the Xperia 5 manages to fly through just about anything you can throw at it. I have no concerns over how it will perform day to day, although the 3100 mAh battery might be a sore point in the longer term. I am more concerned with the update schedule as Sony still hasn't confirmed if or when the Xperia 5 may get Android 10, which you would kind of expect given the major OS update dropped just a week ago. As for the rest of the design, the new colours look sublime in person, and it's one area that Sony really does well, offering superb options for just about any style. My personal preference is the red option, and it is most definitely the most striking, but I will say that most colours do look amazing in the hand. And of course that's where the Xperia 5 hopes to be, in more hands around the globe. With the right pricing it could be a bigger hit than its sibling the Xperia 1, but for now, it seems like a pretty solid overall smartphone. So until the full review, this is Damien with 9to5Google saying thanks for watching and I will speak to you later.